Let's say you're a new private pilot and you just finished up all your training in an airplane with analog flight instruments. Are you required to take some kind of training in order to fly an airplane with digital flight instruments? If you said no, you're right, but there are some things you should be aware of before you jump in that cockpit and take off. Aircraft calling, safe position. Digital flight instruments, or as I like to call them, glass cockpits come in all different shapes and sizes. But as a general rule, these are usually broken up into three main components. The first of which is the primary flight display, also known as the PFD. Information that you'd receive here is the same information that you would traditionally receive from the six primary flight instruments, or the six pack. In just a second, we'll talk about how to interpret what you're looking at on the PFD. But for now, let's look at the other two parts. One of these is the multifunction display, also known as the MFD. The MFD can display a lot of different types of information. One of these is navigation information, kind of like the moving map you see here. These can also display engine data, traffic information, weather, and a lot more. In fact, on some MFDs, at the push of a button, they can also become a primary flight display, which can be pretty handy if you lose your PFD for one reason or another. And this brings me to the third part of our glass cockpit, the standby flight instruments. These include the airspeed indicator, the attitude indicator, the altimeter, and the magnetic compass. And if you're a subscriber to the Free Pilot Training Channel, you're probably an expert on all these by now. Okay, so let's go back and take a closer look at the primary flight display. All the information that you're used to seeing is still here. It's just in a little bit different spot than what you're used to. For example, take a look over here at the airspeed indicator. Instead of seeing the round dial you're used to, we're seeing something now called an airspeed tape. And this thing's super nice because it slides up and down to give your exact airspeed as you're flying. And notice, this thing's also color-coded like the old-fashioned ones. And these help you identify safe airspeeds to fly at in different configurations. And if you don't know what those are, I've got a video that goes into a lot more detail on that. Next, if you take a quick glance over here at the altimeter, you'll notice that it's also a tape. And your altimeter setting should be attached to this thing somewhere. As you can see here, it's at the bottom of the tape. But in addition to that, most of these have a place where you can set a specific altitude. In most cases, this setting will allow the airplane to alert the pilot once you reach your desired altitude. If the airplane has autopilot installed, this can also be used to hold your altitude. Next, we have the vertical speed indicator, and these are usually right next to the altimeter on these things. And as you can see, this guy's also a tape. Then over here, we have the attitude indicator. As you can probably tell, this thing looks really similar to the old gauges, but it's a lot easier to read. And just like the old ones, these still give you the same indications of pitch and bank. But you'll probably notice that these are a lot smoother and they give a lot more accurate readings. Down here, you might have noticed that the miniature aircraft is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. If you don't like the new airplane, some of these allow you to change it out for the old waterline. Let's zoom in just a little bit on the new bank indicator. Underneath this triangle is a little bar. This is your slip skid indicator and it replaces your old ball. So when you get those left to right side forces, you step on the bar now instead of the ball. Now let's take a look down here at the new heading indicator. Just like the old one, this guy tells us our magnetic heading. But in addition to that, you probably already noticed that it also gives us some navigation information. When it combines this data like this, we call this a horizontal situation indicator. This particular HSI is tuned into a VOR, but a lot of airplanes can display even more than that. This particular airplane has a GPS tied to it. Then up here above the HSI, you'll find the turn indicator. And this is how we'd know if we were in a standard rate turn or a half standard rate turn. Do you remember what that is? Comment below if you do. So how do all these things work? Let's take a quick look at that. First we'll take a look at what traditionally would have been the gyroscopic instruments. If you can't remember what those are, those are the attitude indicator, the heading indicator, and the turn indicator. These instruments get their information from something called the attitude and heading reference system. This thing is basically a small box with a bunch of sensors inside. A couple of these sensors are called accelerometers and rate gyros. These sense pitch and bank. The AHER system then takes this data and sends it over to the attitude indicator and the turn indicator. Another type of sensor inside of the AHERS is a magnetometer. These sense the Earth's magnetic field vector to determine the magnetic heading of your airplane. The AHER system then sends this data over to the primary flight display so you can read the information on the heading indicator. And the best part about this whole system is that it eliminates compass errors, which means you don't have to update your heading indicator anymore in flight. 
Another one of these fancy electrical boxes on these new airplanes is called an air data computer. This guy takes dynamic air pressure from the pitot tube and static air from the static port and converts it into information that the pilot can use. Then it takes that information and sends it over to the PFD so it can be read on the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. One cool thing about the air data computer is that it also includes temperature sensors, and this allows it to give you your true airspeed in flight. To check to make sure the air data computer works properly, during each pre-flight, you should blow into the pitot tube until you hear this message. Air data computer checks, okay. I'm just kidding, don't actually do that. It actually says not to do that here on the air data computer. So why do I care about these two systems? Well, if you get these big red X's across your airspeed indicator, your altimeter, and your vertical speed indicator, then you know you have a failed air data computer. But if I have big red X's across my attitude indicator, my turn indicator, and my HSI, then I know I have a failed AHERS system. And that's really going to help me in an emergency, because when I pull out the POH, I'll know which piece of equipment to troubleshoot. And if that fails, I've still got the trusty old standby flight instruments which are not required in VFR conditions, but they are when you're flying IFR. Look how easy it was to knock out a little bit of studying. Smash that like button and keep the trend going with this video right here. See ya!